Welcome back to AWS with a beer and hello to all you future AI pros. This video is going to dive into the exam guide of the AWS Certified AI Practitioner Certification. So if you're looking to take this cert and stick around as I will break down each domain, elaborating on what you can expect to be assessed on to help you prepare for and ace this cert. But before we get started, please like and subscribe so I can keep sharing AWS insights, announcements and hints and tips with you. Okay, so this cert being a practitioner level or entry level cert is ideally geared towards non-IT professionals. So business leaders, marketing teams, sales and product managers, etc. It's a great way to validate your foundational knowledge of AWS's AI services and the use of AI. Now there's five domains and in this video I focus on domain one, fundamentals of AI and ML to help you understand what you need to know. So domain one, fundamentals of AI and ML. This has three different task statements. The first one requires you to explain basic AI concepts and terminologies. So this section is all about laying the foundation by getting cozy with the core AI concepts and jargon. First off, you need to master the basics, understanding terms like AI, ML, deep learning, and neural networks. Imagine AI as the broad field where computer systems are designed to simulate human intelligence, while ML or machine learning is a subset where machines learn from data. And deep learning is like ML's advanced version using layers of neural networks, which are kind of like the brain. Then there's computer vision for teaching machines to see, and NLP, or natural language processing, for helping them understand our speech and text. But it's not just about definitions. You'll also need to compare these terms, spotting the key differences between AI, ML, and deep learning. For example, AI could be a chatbot that seems intelligent, while ML is what lets it learn from mistakes, and deep learning is what gives it a boost in understanding complex patterns, like recognizing faces in photos. Speaking of which, the exam could throw scenarios at you, like choosing the right technique for tasks that involve images, text, or time series data. Now you'll also want to grasp different types of inferencing. Think of batch processing as analyzing large chunks of data at once, like Netflix crunching numbers overnight to recommend shows, while real-time processing is more like getting instant results as you interact with a system, such as voice assistants that are very common now. Now the exam will likely test your understanding of data types too. Labeled data has clear tags like dog or cat in images, while unlabeled data leaves the system to figure it out. Get familiar with structured data. Think spreadsheets versus unstructured data like videos or tweets. Supervised learning is like having a teacher guide you, while unsupervised learning is more freeform exploration. And reinforcement learning is all about learning by trial and error. Expect questions that blend these ideas together like which type of learning works best for identifying spam emails, or what's the difference between tabular and image data. Mastering these will be key to acing this first part of your AWS AI journey. So buckle up, because understanding these concepts is the ticket to unlocking AI's potential, both in the exam and in real world scenarios. Now this next task statement focuses on identifying practical use cases for AI. So this section dives into the nitty gritty of how AI and ML can transform everyday business problems into automated scalable solutions. So what might this look like in the exam? Well, you may need to recognize where AI and ML can provide real value. Think beyond the buzzwords and understand how AI can assist human decision making, drive scalability or fully automate a process. For instance, consider a scenario where a company wants to predict customer churn. You should be able to identify that this is a great use case for classification models or predictive analytics using machine learning. But on the flip side, sometimes AI isn't the best solution. For example, when precise outcomes are more critical than predictions, or when the cost-benefit analysis doesn't support an AI solution, like when the effort to train a model outweighs the actual business gains. You may also need to select the right ML techniques for different scenarios. If the goal is to categorize emails as spam or not, that's classification. Predicting future sales based on past data, that's regression. Grouping similar customers together, that's clustering. 
Real world examples help bring this to life. You might need to identify when computer vision, like image recognition, is the answer, or when natural language processing tools like Amazon Comprehend should be used to analyze customer feedback. So the exam will likely test your knowledge of AWS's managed AI and ML services. Do you know when to reach for Amazon SageMaker versus a specialized service like Amazon Polly for text-to-speech, Amazon Transcribe for converting speech to text, or Amazon Translate for multi-language support. Expect questions where you match the problem to the tool, like choosing Amazon Lex for building chatbots, or Amazon Recognition for detecting objects in images. By the end, you'll be able to pinpoint exactly where and how AI can practically be applied, and just as importantly, where it shouldn't be used, so you can make smarter AI and ML choices in real-world scenarios. Now, the last task statement for Domain 1 needs you to know how to describe the ML development lifecycle. So here you'll need to know more than just the buzzwords. You'll need to understand how everything connects from start to finish. So let's break this down as to what this means and what you can expect. First off, the ML pipeline is like a well-oiled factory. It starts with data collection, where you gather the raw materials, the data that you need. But that isn't ready to be used as is. It's messy, so you'll perform some exploratory data analysis, or EDA, and data processing to clean it up. Once it's looking good, you move it on to feature engineering, transforming the data into meaningful inputs for your model. Now onto the exciting part, the model training. And this is where your ML algorithm learns patterns from the data. But it doesn't stop there. You'll tweak your model with hyperparameter tuning to get the best performance, then evaluate it using metrics like accuracy, F1 score, or AUC to see how well it's doing. So where do these models come from? You might use open source pre-trained models from places like Hugging Face or build your own custom models. And once your model is polished, it's time to bring it into the real world. In production, you could deploy it using a managed API services like AWS SageMaker or go the DIY route with a self-hosted API. And this is where AWS shines. You'll need to know which services to tap into for each stage, like Amazon SageMaker for model training or Data Wrangler for pre-processing. But wait, getting your model into production is just the beginning. You'll need to monitor it continuously, ensuring it doesn't degrade over time. And this is where MLOps concepts come into play, like setting up repeatable processes, managing model drift, and planning for retraining as your data changes. All this ensures that your models stay accurate, scalable, and cost-effective. When evaluating your model's success, you're not just looking at technical performance metrics like AUC. You'll also consider business impact. How much does this model cost per user? Is it delivering a strong return on investment? These are key insights that can make or break a project. Now, you could expect to see exam scenarios that challenge you to identify the right AWS tools for each stage of the pipeline, choose suitable evaluation metrics, and understand how MLOps can help maintain production models. You might see questions like, which SageMaker feature would you use to automate model monitoring? Or what business metric best measures the value of a model predicting customer churn? Understanding both the technical and business sides of ML will be your ticket to acing the exam. That's about it for Domain 1, and when you're ready to dive into the second video for Domain 2, Fundamentals of Generative AI, take a look at my next video, and again, please like and subscribe so you don't miss out on more AWS content to help you ace your sets. Cheers.